What we're going to be looking at here is a summary for accounting requirements for recognizing gains and losses on exchanges of non-monetary assets. So what we're talking about here for non-monetary assets would be like property, plant, and equipment or long-term assets here. An example would be like for Corporation A trading in an old machine for a new machine or where Corporation A and Corporation B exchange machines here. It may require cash either given or cash received. So let's go down and look at our flow here, our decisions, step-by-step -step decisions that we'd have to make here to determine any gain or loss on this exchange. So for exchange of non-monetary assets, the gain or loss recognition here would be uh, step one here. Compute total gain or loss of the asset given up. That's the clue here. Look at given up here. So you would take the fair value of the asset here, less its book value, subtract its book value here from the fair value, and that would give uh, determine any gain or loss here that you'd have on this exchange. Now remember the book value here. That's a um, the equipment cost that's sitting here in the book, what, they pay, what you paid for the equipment, less any accumulated depreciation. So step two here. If a loss, recognize the entire loss. Step three here. If a gain, well, if it's a gain, you have to determine if there's any commercial substance here in the transaction here. And what we mean by conserv con commercial substance is the fu if the future cash flows change the economic position here. So if, if, if any future cash flows affect the economics of this exchange, then it'd be yes here for commercial substance. Uh, you satisfy the conserved commercial substance requirement here. You would recognize the entire gain here. And then B here. If there's no commercial substance, that is you, you didn't si satisfy this commercial substance requirement, then you have to look at the three, op or three that uh, options or what you would, might have here. So number one here, if no cash is involved, no gain is recognized. Number two, if some cash is given here, that, that's the key here, given, no gain would be recognized. But three here, if some cash is received, then you have to determine the portion of the gain recognized here. And we just use that through this simple uh, formula here, where you'd have your cash received and that's called boot here. That's generally what they refer to as boot. So if there was some cash received here, uh, boot, you divide the total cash received or the total uh, boot here, cash received, plus the fair value of the other assets received here. Divide that amount here into your cash received and then you would take it times the total gain here. Whatever your total gain is here, you multiply this fractional amount times your total gain and that equals the dollar portion here uh, of the um, this sum of this cash received or that would be the portion of the gain recognized here that would be the dollar portion of the gain here there's one other item here uh, that we have to note if cash exchanged is greater than 25 percent of the fair value of the assets exchanged here then you'd recognize the entire gain here so just to go through it one more time here this step three here if some cash is received then you you have to determine the portion of the gain recognized. So whatever gain you have up here, then you would determine the portion or the fractional amount of that gain simply with the cash received here divided by the sum total here, the cash received plus the fair value of the other assets received times your total gain here that you have. That gives you your portion here, the gain that you're going to recognize. Okay, and just to summarize here, one other thing here for the uh, book value here. I'm just showing that here. You have your equipment cost. That's what you paid for the equipment here. Then you subtract out your accumulated depreciation. You get the book value amount. That's what you have to def deal with here. And then, a again, the exchange has commercial substance if the future cash flows change economic positions here. Uh, kind of a legal definition here, but you can understand what that means here. And then number two, or, and then finally here, to determine the fair value, use the appropriate valuation here. And I'm just throwing this out here as the market approach here, market prices of comparable assets here, the income approach, convert cash flows and earnings to their present value, or the cost of approach here to current replacement cost. So usually this is a, uh, uh, when we determine this fair value here, that's the exchange price between the two parties, but you have to determine what the fair value is. All right, 
one more look here at, at this table here. This is just remember when you're dealing with these problems, have this table alongside here or your problem here, and then you have to make your decisions from from there. But remember, you do have to determine your fair value here is key and your book value. So if you don't, if those values aren't right here, then you're going to end up with the wrong solution to your problem.